Kaleba Tit Lo Lich Trin Ko the Chovik F-16 Den Ukraine Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kaleba announced that F-16 fighter jets are expected to arrive in Ukraine during the first quarter of 2024. Training for Ukrainian pilots is set to begin in August or early September, with preparations for the aircraft's transfer also underway. Kaleba emphasized the need for engineers, technicians, and infrastructure to be ready for the arrival of the fighter jets. A coalition of Western partners, including the United States, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Denmark, will participate in training Ukrainian pilots. The exact timing and quantity of the fighter jets to be received by Ukraine have not been announced, but efforts are underway to determine these details in the coming months. Politico reported that Ukraine may receive its first F-16s in early 2024. More submarines, jets for Indian Navy on cards as Modi visits France. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is traveling to France to strengthen ties with the country and participate in Bastille Day celebrations. The visit marks the 25th anniversary of the strategic partnership between India and France and is expected to result in new high-profile defense deals. France has been a close partner to India for decades, and the two countries have a history of defense cooperation. The deals may include the purchase of additional Scorpion submarines and 26 Rafale fighter jets. Both India and France share interests in the Indian Ocean region and have concerns about China's assertiveness there. During the visit, Modi will meet with French President Emmanuel Macron, attend private and state banquets, and engage with political leaders, business figures, and the Indian diaspora. This visit comes shortly after Modi's state visit to the United States, where critical military technology was offered to India. Turkey's parliament won't ratify Sweden's NATO membership bid before October, Erdogan says. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced that Sweden's NATO membership bid will not be ratified by Turkey's parliament until after October. Speaking at the NATO summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, Erdogan stated that the parliament is not in session for the next two months due to the summer recess. However, he expressed the intention to finalize the matter as soon as possible. Turkey recently withdrew its objections to Sweden joining NATO, a move that contributes to the unity of Western leaders in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Finland has already become a NATO member, and Sweden is expected to become the alliance's 32nd member. Both Nordic countries, traditionally non-aligned, have been motivated by concerns about Russian aggression. Iran's common A says West endangering Ukrainian lives. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, claimed that Western countries are endangering the lives of Ukrainians in order to sell arms to Kiev for its war against Russia. During a meeting in Tehran, Khamenei accused Western nations of pushing Ukraine into conflict to serve the interests of arms manufacturers. Ukraine's Western allies have indeed provided significant military support to counter Russia's invasion. Meanwhile, both Iran and Russia, facing international sanctions, have sought closer cooperation to boost their economies. The United States has accused Iran of supplying drones to Russia, but Iran denies supporting any side in the Ukraine war and rejects allegations of exporting arms to Russia. China blasts U.S. for forcing it to accept South China Sea ruling. China has accused the United States of ganging up and pressuring it to accept a 2016 arbitration ruling on the South China Sea dispute. The ruling by the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague stated that China's claim to almost the entire South China Sea was groundless. China maintains that it does not accept any claim or action based on the ruling and believes it violated the principle of state consent. The US, along with countries like the UK, Japan, and Australia, has urged China to comply with international law and respect states' rights in the region. In commemoration of the ruling's anniversary, the Philippines launched a website highlighting its legal victory against China. The South China Sea is a crucial trade route, with about $3 trillion worth of goods passing through it annually. Australia gives more Bushmaster vehicles to Ukraine after NATO meet. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese announced that Australia will provide an additional 30 Bushmaster protected vehicles to Ukraine, following a request from the country. The vehicles are used to transport troops in frontline areas. Albanese met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during a meeting of NATO leaders in Lithuania. He emphasized that Ukraine's fight for national sovereignty has implications for the entire world and is a struggle for the international rule of law. Australia has already supplied Ukraine with a total of 120 Bushmasters, making it one of the largest non-NATO contributors to Ukraine's support. The leaders of Australia, 
Japan, South Korea, and New Zealand, who are NATO partners, participated in the NATO meeting. The move comes as Beijing opposes NATO's expansion in the Indo-Pacific region and criticizes the alliance's stance on China's interests and security. Australia's Defence Forces review in April highlighted China's significant military buildup without transparency since World War II. China warplanes make biggest Taiwan incursion in three months. China has sent a record number of warplanes into sensitive areas around Taiwan, with 32 planes crossing the median line in the Taiwan Strait or the island's air defense identification zone. The Chinese aircraft conducted joint sea and air training with naval vessels. Taiwan closely monitored the movements and deployed missile systems to deal with them. China's increased military activities near Taiwan have been observed following visits to Taiwan by U.S. and Canadian lawmakers and Taiwanese efforts to boost its international profile. China opposes any contact between nations it has official ties with and Taiwan's leaders. NATO leaders have expressed concerns about China's coercive policies and threats to Taiwan. Paraguay's president-elect also visited Taiwan, highlighting the nation's recognition of Taiwan. Taiwan plans to hold annual live-fire drills to strengthen countermeasures against military threats. Senators offer bill to block any U.S. president from leaving NATO. Democratic and Republican senators have reintroduced a joint resolution aimed at preventing any U.S. president from withdrawing the country from NATO without the Senate's approval. The resolution states that the president cannot suspend or withdraw the United States from the North Atlantic Treaty without the advice and consent of the Senate. The bill, which has been introduced multiple times in recent years, has not yet passed the full Senate but received strong bipartisan support from the Foreign Relations Committee. With the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and NATO's expansion, backers expect stronger support for the resolution. President Joe Biden, a strong supporter of NATO, is expected to emphasize unity at the NATO summit in Vilnius, especially regarding Ukraine. The summit also included the inaugural session of the NATO-Ukraine Council to enhance relations between Ukraine and the alliance. House Republicans grill FBI director as Democrats deride attacks on agency. House Republicans grilled FBI Director Christopher Wray in a contentious committee hearing, accusing the FBI of political bias in its investigations into Donald Trump and Hunter Biden. Democrats dismissed the attacks as conspiracy theories and defended the FBI. The hearing saw Republicans focusing on Hunter Biden's case, while Democrats emphasized Trump's federal charges. Wray highlighted the FBI's efforts to combat violent crime and drug trafficking. Ray has faced scrutiny from Republicans in recent months, including threats of impeachment and a potential contempt vote. The hearing highlighted ongoing challenges for Ray. DOJ asks appeals court to block Trump deposition in Strzok, Page Suits. The Justice Department has appealed a federal judge's decision affirming that former President Trump can be called to testify in suits against the DOJ by Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. Strzok and Page, former FBI agents, were involved in the investigation into potential ties between Trump and Russia. The judge ruled that Trump and FBI Director Christopher Wray could be forced to testify, but the DOJ is seeking reconsideration. The DOJ argues that Trump's testimony is unnecessary since Wray and John Kelly have already testified, and Trump has publicly discussed the matter. The case will be considered by the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals.